Things to look out for when buying a model steam engine. This is the first in the series and it covers model beam engines. I spend quite a lot of time repairing model engines for different people. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. And here you see a Stuart Models major beam engine running on the bench. And if you look at it, it is a thing of beauty. It's very big for a model. And also this is quite an expensive model. The castings alone to make this engine are round about £1,000 from Stuart Models. Stuart Models have got a very good name in the business for making really good steam engines. But generally Stuart Models supply castings and the steam engine is only as good as the engineer who machines the castings. On this engine the castings are very well machined. But something's gone wrong along the way. See if you can spot what it is. Have you spotted it yet? I'll give you a clue. This engine should run a lot slower than this. This is about as slow as I can get this thing to go without it stopping. And there's no power in the engine. Hardly any power at all. You can see that there's a tight spot just over top dead centre. The flywheel almost stops. There are actually a multitude of problems with this engine. Here's the first one. The overall engineering standard on this engine is pretty good. It surprises me though that a fundamental error, like the hole that's been drilled in the casting, which takes the water pump pin, it's not in the middle of the casting. This is really bad as it is very visible on the model. Had I have made this model in the first place, I could not have lived with this hole being in the wrong place in such a visible part. Moving now to the cylinder, as you can see there is a bad air leak all the way around. This is probably due to the gasket, but it wants looking into because if the engine was in steam, there would be steam all over the place. If you're thinking of buying a steam engine from the internet, where all you have to look at is a photograph, you would of course miss this entirely because the seller would not show it on the photograph. Another minor problem that is quite interesting with this engine is that when I first ran it at a good speed, the governor hit the flywheel. So I put a small spring in place, as you can see here, which may or may not be shown on the drawing, but it stops the steel balls from contacting the flywheel at speed. Now comes the start of the most serious problem, and this is a serious problem. This is the end of the beam at the cylinder end. The beam is not in the center. As you can see, it's hard over one side. There is no real excuse for this. This is not necessarily bad engineering, it's bad fitting. Fitting and engineering are two separate skills, and I do find that some engineers are really good at making the parts, but do not have the patience to fit the parts together. The beam is not centralised on the main pivot that supports the beam. When the engine is running, the beam is in danger of actually hitting the parallel motion. And it gets worse. If we move now to the main flywheel and the small pulley, look at these. Not exactly running true. A quick visual inspection is not enough. I really would need to have these off the shaft and see what sort of a fit they are on the shaft. The builder has deviated somewhat from the drawing. On the drawing, there is a pedestal that supports the outer edge of the flywheel. In this case, he's built the whole thing onto like a box. And again, in common with a lot of models, the box is a joke. It's made out of very cheap soft wood with some sort of veneer stuck on it and the veneer is coming off and it's not very good at all. Here's another minor problem. The stanchion that supports the governor valve is not exactly vertical. And again, these are small points that really annoy you when you look at them. A minor point perhaps, but on such an expensive engine, I think it should be correct. This is also not correct and this is quite serious. The piston seems to blow. Compressed air is leaking past the piston. There is no power whatsoever in this engine, as most of the air is just blowing past the piston. Also, maybe the slide valve doesn't fit very well on the port face. I can't comment any further on these two points without dismantling the engine fully. And there's more. This is very suspicious. Have a look at the way the bed plate has been machined to take the plumber block. It looks to me like a mistake has been corrected here, but either way it doesn't look too hot with the big lug on the left hand side and an almost machine to nothing lug on the right hand side. It would have been a better idea to just machine the mounting part of the base plate flat. 
but then everything would have looked fine. When you're buying a steam engine, do not get excited about the steam engine itself when you go to buy it. Keep a cool and level head and keep your eyes wide open. Have a look for all the things that I've just gone through and you will often find there are problems. And don't forget to listen out for spurious clunking noises coming from the engine because this will definitely tell you that something is either worn or not made properly. Had I have been offered this engine, I would have walked away from it because it's not well made. Having said that, if it was very cheap, I would have bought it and put it right. I may get the job of repairing it, in which case I will serialise it on here. So when buying steam engines, do not get excited, keep a cool head and you'll get things at the right price. But if you're all excited about buying the engine, you're going to miss the obvious things that are wrong with it. And unless you can put any of the problems right yourself, it may end up being a costly purchase. But looking on the bright side, this is my large duplex boiler feed pump that I'm renovating. And I've now fitted it some drain cocks to the water cylinder to completely drain the cylinders, as well as some brass parts on the water inlet and outlet. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.